You are now watching Nicode. Hey everyone, it's Nicode here. Today I've got a fun tutorial for you. We're going to create a super cute 2D animated border for your camera, perfect for streams, tutorials, and whatever. Uh, big shout out to Bryson McPhee, whose delightful designs not only inspired today's tutorial, but also helped me reacquaint myself with Blender's Grease Pencil. If you've dabbled in 3D design, or like me, started in the world of 2D animation, but battled the intricacies of software like Flash and Animate, then working in Blender's Grease Pencil will be a treat. Um, so let's, let's dive right in. Okay, so once you have Grease Pencil open, you'll see this startup. Uh, it defaults to the 1920 by 1080 resolution. We're using EV Render. We're not gonna get too deep into most of these settings, uh, just the ones that you'll need to change in order to follow along with this tutorial. Uh, first and foremost, you're, wanna, you're going to wanna go into your draw mode. Uh, stroke I'm gonna turn the strength off uh, and then bring it up to one uh, then let's check out the object data properties in our properties panel and we're going to want to turn off the use lights for both the fills and the lines um, super, super simple 2D line art uh, inspired by Bryson okay. McBee, but also artists like Jesse Moynihan, uh, you know, Pendleton Ward, Adventure Time style, Cal Arts, whatever, whatever you would call this style of, of framing. Um, it's really fun to make in Grease Pencil. And let's just get to it. Okay, now for the magic of symmetry. But before diving in, big props to Bryson McBee for his fantastic Blender tutorial, an intro to Grease Pencil, and some super secret tips. It's a goldmine of information on Grease Pencil. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend checking it out. First, let's make a new Grease Pencil object. First, we are going to go into object mode. Press Shift A to make a new Grease Pencil object. We'll keep this one blank. And then in the properties panel up here, we can press M to make a new collection and we'll call this symmetry. Symmetry, how do I spell? Oh my God, I forgot how to spell this. Okay. Symmetry. Um, and then with this selected, we can press shift A, collection instance symmetry. So this will copy the G pencil symmetry instance, and then we're going to want to press R Z 180, and that will rotate the scene 180 degrees. Which you may not be seeing anything just yet, but if we were to draw, switch back to draw mode, and draw in our grease pencil scene. Now we see that there is symmetry being applied. And this makes it really great for, you know, building out the frame. Uh, this is a symmetrical frame. So uh, what's on the left is gonna show up on the right. Uh, you could also do quadrants and have it all be, you know, top down symmetrical. But for now, we're just gonna do the left, right horizontal symmetry. Um, all right, so let's start drawing this thing. I'm gonna delete this stroke from the collection. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do uh, when we're drawing out our frame is to kind of get like a rough sketch of it. Um, I wanna do something similar to this frame around me. So uh, I might time lapse this, but yeah. Okay, so when you finish sketching out a basic draft of what you want your sketch to look like, uh, you can tweak it around a little bit. This is when we start kind of uh, deciding the colors that we wanna use. Um, 
and with our materials selected we can start to make these different materials uh, i like to keep everything in the same layer so from here i usually just add a material and copy over the base one which is black or solid stroke um, we can use this new material button right here to make it not just a duplicate but its own uh, its own instance its own material instance and then I start to kind of decide the color palette that I'm going to be use be using I want it to be similar to this frame so we're gonna go with like a yellow um, red uh, yellow red blue green kind of deal um, so you want the stroke to be black and then the inside to be your fill color. Uh, we can test this out. Oh, it's not filling. the alpha was set on that black material so if you want to change that just you can go into the base color and turn that alpha to one we want it to be opaque so uh, that, that should be our yellow color um, want it to be a little lighter all right cool cool um, I'm gonna turn the radius down to like 20 I feel like it's a little too thick um, and there's our yellow and then we can just select our yellow from this drop down menu new material this will be our red give it like that color new material select our red uh doesn't are the yellow or whatever we're just copying these over this will be our blue and then uh select one of those materials copy it uh, green cool so we want to make a new grease pencil and then I should have just had all the materials set up in this object but hindsight is 2020. Okay, cool. so now with this new grease pencil set up, uh, we have our base kind of drawing right there. And uh, I'm gonna delete this one. <laughs> All right, and with our new thing set up in our in draw mode, we want to start drawing this frame. So I'll select the green material, and let's give it like this kind of viney. material so I can draw over some of these things all right so there's that and we can give this a little bink 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 bink
I liked how this face turned out at the bottom. Um, so once you're happy with how your frame looks, we're going to want to go into object mode and select this camera right here. So when we press zero on the numpad, it should give you a view of what you're gonna be looking through from the camera. And if you notice this white line isn't encompassing our, uh, our frame. So we're going to want to zoom out. Uh, I do this by pressing G and then holding down the middle mouse button and that brings the camera back. So we wanna do it until our, uh, our piece, our frame is fully in frame. And then I sometimes eyeball it because we're, we want this to be wider than the resolution of our camera, which is uh, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to set this percentage to around one, let's say 140% because we want it to be a little bit bigger. Um, there's no right, I mean, there definitely is a right resolution to use for this, but I'm not using it. So, uh, I think we're fine. All right. So with our, oh, all right. It looks like I was drawing on the wrong layer that entire time. So we're going to want to go into here and then select, uh, this black material which is actually the blue material that i was using to draw over and then we want to take that and delete it so that's not working um that black selected we can go to edit mode and we're going to want to deselect everything and then just select the black material delete points and then in object mode, we're not going to see that, uh, that sketch we made anymore. Um, this is kind of screwed up right here. Let's just fill that in. Now I wanna add a little bit of noise to this. So I am going to go into the wrench modifier, go to noise, uh, the position's usually pretty loud, so we'll turn that down to 0.1 and then set the noise scale to around 0.1. So that gives it this kind of like a live look. You can see there's some weird stuff going on with the lips over here. So let's change that up a little bit. All right, besides that, it looks great. We love it, we love our frame. All right, so we got the noise added to it. Let's go to the scene properties panel. Uh, everything here looks right, except we're gonna wanna set this to transparent. And then we can do a test render of our image. That's what the frame here should look like. Looks good. Um, Next we go to our output and set this file to a place where you want to save it. So make it make sense. Um, Make sure data is on combined and then we go to render animation. Combined and Z. Combined and Z is what we wanted to. All right, and then we go to render animation and it'll start rendering out the we don't need this to be 250 frames because it's just the noise of the animation. So we can bring this down to a more doable number like 30 and then go to render animation. And there it is. 
All right, so once those frames are rendered, we are going to want to take the, that PNG sequence that was just rendered out into the photo editing software of our choice. Um, now, usually I would take it into Photoshop, but since some people don't have access to the Adobe suite, I'm going to show you a free way to do this. Um, so the site is called giftmaker.me. I'll throw the link in the description. But from giftmaker.me, we're going to want to upload our images that we just rendered. So go to the file where you rendered those out. Now, the reason I don't use this and choose to use like Adobe Suite or a program on my computer is because this will compress those images uh, to a smaller size. Um, and then also if you wanted to do longer animations, like I think it cuts out at around 200 images. But if you think about it, uh, if you're using this for streaming, you don't really need it to be fully 1920 by 1080 pixels in order to get that sharp look, especially if we're using this sort of lo-fi animation, hand-drawn animation. All right, so you're gonna wanna set the animation speed to 50 milliseconds and then press create GIF animation, which will render out the GIF for you and then save that to a place that makes sense. Give it a name that makes sense, it'll save as a GIF. And then uh, I'm using OBS, so from OBS I can kind of move all my stuff around and uh, I like the control that OBS gives me. We'll, uh, turn off my display Bruh. here and then we can bring in oh wow I didn't realize I was doing it with the... anyways um, we'll go to the image that I have set and then we will bring in the new border all right and then we can move this around until it looks good Beautiful. Is it better than the last one? I think it might be better than the last one. Um, I like to throw these into a group. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna get a little bit of feedback here, but turning on the display in OBS, uh, you see I have uh, the frame camera folder and then the image, which I can rename to to animated border and then uh, from here you can change the properties you can resize it you can move it around to make sure that it's uh, flush on your on your frame all right there you have it a delightful 2d animated border for your camera easy remember the best designs often come from playing around and letting your creativity flow don't be afraid to experiment. And before signing off, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more tutorials. If you try this out, tag me on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you share your creations. I'd love to see your designs. Until next time, happy designing.